So you can see from the uh, earlier tests that uh, Lewis kind of started out cartoony. You know, he started out. Um, can I have a picture, please? <laughs> 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 If you can, yeah. there you go. <laughs> so he started out kind of cartoony, and actually, even the eye glasses were a vestige of an earlier plot point. Originally, he had been a nerdy human who had been turned into an alligator uh, by Dr. Facilier, but we dropped that for simplification purposes, and he became, you know, an alligator who was enamored of jazz because he heard it on the river boats, you know, passing by. So he eventually evolved into this. Well, not quite. He eventually evolved into this. But we really had to go back and look at real alligators. You know, one thing that we did uh, is we had a design retreat, uh, which meant that uh, we all got together and drew all over each other's drawings, you know, to try and hone uh, these things, you know, to make a unified cast. And what was happening, uh, you know, amongst my colleagues is everyone was feeling Lewis wasn't gatory enough. So I really did have to go back. We looked at some neat National Geographic footage and other things. I really had to study a gator's construction. Uh, and Lewis eventually came out, you know, more of a realistic alligator, but still with the same kind of charm and, and personality quirks that you see in that first test. Basically, Lewis is a study in contrasts. He's, He's nervous as anything. He's got all of these phobias and all that kind of stuff, but he is absolutely in his element when he plays his jazz. So one thing I noticed in my earlier drawings was that um, I was putting the mouth directly under the eyes, you know, like a human character. And when I looked at the gator footage and all the stills, I noticed the jaw was hinged all the way back here. So automatically, once I did that, he started to look much more like a real gator. Um, there are certain things like a gator has this little pouch here around the mouth. So I went ahead and caricatured that as a kind of secondary cheek for him and brought that, you know, I had to make his nose flatter, more gator-like, his nostrils more gator-like. And uh, a gator has this great big, bull neck as well. So even if I was drawing his cranium here, then I had to put this whole part underneath it, you know, and it's interesting when you're animating, if um, you have to kind of define what's soft and what's hard. So for example, when I'm animating his chin, that's hard, but when I'm animating this stuff on his neck, we animate that in a more fleshy way. So eventually, he became much more gator-like, and of course, one thing that's a big deal about gators is that uh, they have these huge bodies and these very tiny arms and, and hands, and we thought that was a nice element for humor on him, too. Now, like I said, he's a study in contrast. One thing that came, uh, you know, that was great inspiration was that Michael Leon Woolley was cast to do his voice. Michael uh, has this great booming voice, and uh, for those of you who don't know him, he's a Broadway actor. He, uh, he was the voice on, I think, the last revival of Little Shop of Horrors. He was the voice of Audrey too, if you guys remember what that plant sounded like. Yeah. But you can see, you know, that Lewis is a bit of a study in contrast here. Here he's, he's faking like he's dying because he got a pricker stuck in his finger. Um, <laughs> but eventually, he winds up, you know, being the coolest thing ever and really being able to shake his body around when he's playing his jazz. <laughs>